Let's make Dudina Mutia. Start by processing the ginger, garlic, and green chilies. I'm using a mortar and pestle here, but you can use a small blender or grinder or a chopper, just anything to create kind of a coarse paste out of the ginger, garlic, and green chilies. My mortar and pestle is small, so I do it in batches. Peel the opo squash or duthi. This is not something you should prep ahead. If the duthi is peeled or grated too soon, it will start to oxidize and blacken. You want to do this immediately before you're ready to start making the mutia. I'm going to cut this into four pieces lengthwise and remove the seeds. I'm just going to slice all the way across and just remove the densely seeded area. Just take out any of the parts that have any tough seeds. Any of the smaller, more tender seeds are just fine. And this will go to our chickens. The food processor makes grating the dudhi really easy but you can also just use a handheld grater. I need three cups of duthi for this. I'm just going to firmly pack the duthi into the cup measure and measure that out. Transfer three cups of grated duthi to a large bowl. And then we're going to add the ginger, garlic, and chili paste, some turmeric, some salt, a little bit of hing or asafoetida, some jaggery, and a little bit of oil. I'm also going to add about a tablespoon of lemon juice and give that a nice mix. Incorporate the masalas and spices with the dudhi mixture. And I'm going to let that rest for about five minutes. I'm going to grease my steaming tray. Any kind of a perforated tray that fits inside your steaming pot will work just fine. I'm going to set that tray aside and you'll see that the opo squash has released a lot of liquid. To this, I'm going to add in darjo kanolot or handwanolot. It's essentially ground lentils and rice. You can make your own at home or you can purchase from most Indian grocery stores or Indian markets as well. The quantity of the rice and lentil flour that you add to this may vary depending on how much water your opo squash is going to release. So I, I always start with two cups of flour to my three cups of dudhi, but I may sometimes have to add a little bit more. And I'm going to give this a nice mix. I'm going to add just a little bit of baking soda to this to help it fluff up and remain really moist. My dough is a little bit too wet, so I'm just adding about a quarter cup extra of the flour. All right, now I'm going to just flatten out the surface and use my spatula to score it into four parts. I'm going to oil my hands. And just grab a section and I'm going to form it into a cylinder that's about one inch in diameter maybe a little bit more one and a half inches in diameter and I want to make sure that there are no cracks along the surface of my cylinder just kind of gently press on all sides and roll it between your hands and I'm going to place each of the cylinders onto my steaming plate make sure there's just a little bit of room between each they're a little bit tightly packed but it should be fine just make sure there's a little bit of room between each cylinder because they will expand for my steamer I use a couple of kitchen towels and just wrap them around a large lid that will fit on top of my Instant Pot. This will ensure that no condensation drips onto the mutia as they are cooking. Now set the Instant Pot to saute mode, add three cups of water, add a tall trivet to the bottom of the pan. I'm going to use my trivet and the sling to transfer my mochia tray into the Instant Pot. I'm going to make sure that the water is not touching the mochia. There's about an inch or two of space between the boiling water and the mochia. Cover and cook until a inserted knife comes out clean. And you see they are nice and fluffy and they've each expanded quite a bit. 
I'm just going to use my paring knife to kind of ensure that they are not sticking to each other and let them cool. Once cold, use a bread knife or any serrated knife to cut each of the cylinders into half inch thick slices. I like to do only two cylinders at a time to make sure that they have enough room to toast up. So heat some oil in a large pan, add some mustard seeds and let those splatter and sizzle a little bit. Add in your sesame seeds and optionally some fenugreek seeds and let those sizzle. Add in the curry leaves. Transfer your mutia slices to the pan. I like to do it one at a time so that I know they each have their own little spot and that they're not going to be crowded in the pan so that they can crisp up nicely. Maybe fit one more. There we go. Flip these over until both sides are nice and golden. I'm just going to let these get nice and golden on both sides. In my family, we like our motillas crispy. Add some cilantro for flavor and color. And there you have it. Dudina motilla.